Hey guys, this is Kev again from Kripke the Chameleon and Friends, and today we're going to talk about how I care for my crickets, a few tweaks that I've made to help keep them alive, as well as a cost-effective way of acquiring them. Thanks again for joining us, guys. I consider these items here mandatory, and these over here optional. So let's quickly go over them. Before we get started, guys, I just want to say I'm under the weather, so I just ask that you please bear with me. But I really wanted to do this video because I felt it was way overdue. I've been contacted on social media for quite some time, and they've asked whether or not if I breed them, or do I buy them, and how do I care for my feeders. You may have noticed I've recently uploaded a video showing how I raise silkworms. I also do the same for dubia roaches, superworms, mealworms, but crickets, I'm not really a fan of crickets. I don't like the way they smell, I don't like how loud they are, but my reptiles really love them, my mudskipper loves them, and my pufferfish loves them. So sometimes you gotta compromise, for the love of your pets. So I'm going to be doing a series of different types of feeder videos and I'll put them all in the playlist so be sure to check those out and also be sure to subscribe and turn on your alerts because I'm going to be working on some other exciting projects so if you turn your alerts on you'll be sure to be notified when those videos come out. So let's quickly dive into this. Please keep in mind this is just an example of what I do. I've already worked out all the tweaks, all the bugs, I no longer have any fatalities so I figured it was only right to share it with my fans, especially for the ones who've been asking questions about how to raise them. I'm pretty sure there are hundreds of different videos out there on the internet that's just as good. Because if you think about it, if there's a hundred different ways to wash a car, why wouldn't there be a hundred different ways to raise crickets, right? But I'll tell you one thing, we'll truly appreciate you guys following along with us. That much I will say. So for example, I use a 10 gallon aquarium with a lid. If you're planning on really diving into this, I'll suggest you probably go with a 20 high and you may not even need a lid as well. I'm very touchy when it comes to crickets. I don't want anything escaping or anything like that. So I would have gotten a lid anyway, but that definitely will give them a lot more floor room as well as being a taller tank. Right over here, I have a scraper. I use this to scrape the bottom area of the tank whenever I'm doing weekly maintenance and this makes it so much better. It's obviously very rusty because I've been using this for two years now, but it definitely does the job. If you come over here, I have a few lids. We'll go into that a little further. Right here, this I think is going to be a little controversial because some people use heat and some others don't. I guess it depends on the climate that you live in and I definitely need it here in New York. The reason why I chose this particular one, because I've used other heat sources before, but you couldn't adjust how hot you wanted it to be, and this here have an adjuster switch. I use the same thing in Kripke's cage, so I wouldn't always have to be at 75 degrees, like whatever degree the bulb is going to be, or I have nowhere to put it higher. So this way I can actually adjust it to wherever I need it to be, and that definitely helps. Over here. We have some egg trays. I highly suggest you guys go this direction. Not only is it going to be cost effective long term, and you can use it for your crickets, your dubiers, your superworms, but please do not use the egg trays that's in your refrigerator. You don't want to risk contaminating your pets. So let's take a look at some of the optional products. This is obviously not an optional product. I'm not feeling well, so I'm drinking some tea. Say hi, Kripke. So for starters, you may want to consider using some gloves. I obviously didn't use any gloves because I couldn't find them at the time that I was recording. But trust me, you don't want to clean a cricket pen and not have gloves on. If I go a little bit to the left, this is a prong. I use this whenever I want to handle, manage, move them around. You can pick up your crickets when you're using it for feedings, etc. This prong comes in definitely handy. If I go a little bit to the right, we have a timer. You definitely may want to consider getting a timer. It comes in handy when you're using your heat source. Even though you can control this, sometimes you don't want it running 24 hours a day. 
So the timer is going to come in handy for as far as turning it on, especially during the summer or when it's getting warmer. You can turn it on every couple hours or a few times a day, however you choose. It comes in handy from as far as controlling the temperature. If I go a little bit to the right, this is a heat gun. This heat gun is something that I use for just about everything. So it's telling me the temperature here. It's telling me the temperature over there. It switches around depending on what you're pointing at. I use this to monitor the temperature of the pen. I use it for my ponds. I use it for my aquariums. I use it for Kripke's cage. This is definitely something that's going to be handy that you can use it and find uses for it on a daily basis. If I go a little bit to the left, we have some water crystals. You can use this as a way to hydrate your crickets. I don't usually use this because the type of foods that I use properly hydrates them. But if you don't have access to the foods, the foods that I'm using, you can definitely consider using this. Just watch out. Sometimes it can cause mold. So you may want to just check on it periodically. It's totally optional. Over here, I have a little cup with some eco-earth. And over here, I have some wire mesh. So if you're planning on doing a breeding project because you want to raise babies and keep your own crickets, just put some of the wire mesh on the top. The parents will go on the top, lay eggs, the babies will hatch, and they will come out. So let's go ahead and talk about what I feed them and how I set up my cricket pen. Even though it's not mandatory, I like to keep my crickets gut loaded so they'll be ready for action at any given time. Go out there and die with honor. What was that movie again? Gladiator. Yep, that's it. The way I look at it, these guys are good to my pets, so why not be good to them? So as we go a little closer, this is just a little mixture of greens as well as fruit. So we have some dandelion greens, mustard greens, orange, sweet potato, apple, carrots. Most of this here is organic, so I highly suggest you consider that. If I go a little bit to the right, I have a little mixture of bug burger and super gut load. I usually will add some calcium cricket diet. Crickets love that stuff, but unfortunately I don't have any at the time. And if you go right here, this is a special gut load that I've made, which is a combination of these things with bee pollen. So be sure to check that video out. I'll include links in the description area. This here is a gel gut load, so it's not going to spill and make a mess. So it'll likely just stay put, and they love this stuff. So be sure to check that video out. So this is what it looks like to have a completed cricket enclosure. To the left top, you'll notice there's a heat source. If you go to the bottom, we have the fruits and veggies. To the right of that, I have those gut loads that I made. And if you go to the other right side of the tank, those are the trays that they live in. I put a couple of holes so the heat can pass through. There's also organic trays as well. I'll be sure to put links in the description area. And just to let you know, I'm actually multitasking. If you go over here, you'll notice I'm working on the superworms as well as the mealworms. I took them out just so I can let you see what they look like. And I'll show you how I set up their enclosures as well. So this is the superworms, this is the mealworms. So as you can see, I'm definitely up to the multitask. We don't mess around here at Kripke the Chameleon and Friends, so be sure to subscribe and hit that alert button. Let's go check out those crickets. So as you can see, when we go, we go big. This is a much better cost-effective option to acquire crickets. You can go online to Josh's Frogs and get them in the box. Again, I'm not promoting anyone in specific, but you can go there. I've bought there before, and it's good, clean crickets. Or you can go to a reptile show, just like I did, and that's where I got this box from a trusted vendor. There's a lot of reputable vendors out there, so you just ask around and they can point you in the right direction. A box like this can cost anywhere between 10 bucks to about 13, 14, 15, depending on how many crickets that you want. But this is a very huge box and more than I need. So give it a shot and definitely consider going to a reptile show again or go online versus going to a pet store and paying up to 20 cents per cricket for just a handful. So what I'm going to do is put these guys in the container. I'm not going to be able to record the entire thing. I'll get as much as I can because you know these little milky liquors are going to start jumping all over the place. Um, I have them in here in a deep Japanese tub. They're not going to get out once I put them in here, but just in the event something escapes, it's going to be in a contained area. 
And I also put them here at night because I don't like hearing the sound. When I put them in this tub and close the door, I never hear a thing. So you may want to consider doing that, put them in the tub if you have one, or it also helps to keep the heat in. So you don't have to run the heat as high by keeping them in the contained area. So this definitely works for us as the best option. So let's go ahead and get these little guys out. So now that we have them out in the container, what I do is always leave one tray in there so they can climb on it. And then I just slowly just move it over. And then I shake them out in here. The reason I put them here first and not just go directly here, I don't want them carrying all the extremities into the new enclosure. So I'm gonna shake out as much as it as possible and then I'm gonna move them over. Now I got them in the enclosure. As you can see, they're having the time of their lives, enjoying the heat, eating up all the food. It's nice and toasty in there. So they're rocking and rolling. Right over here, I have the digital timer. It's a manual one. You can turn it on and off, or you can use it on the automatic settings. I'll also give you a digital option. Just check the description here, it'll have some links. This could be used as a beginner's guide, so please be sure to share with your friends and family. Even an experienced keeper who keeps crickets or anyone who keeps reptiles can benefit from this video. So this is Kev again from Kripke the Chameleon and Friends. Please be sure to subscribe and give us a like and hit that alert button. And as always, one love and God bless. Take care, guys. Hey, dude. You want to borrow my deodorant? Only under one condition, if you're willing to share with your friends.